Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Steam Team's recent purchases. I... Hold on. Where's the writing gone? Uh, no, I, I'll re-enter, hold on. That usually fixes it. <sighs> right, there we are. Right, so... <laughs> fixed. Coming up today, we got a, uh, a lot of good stuff today. Uh, very few books, you'll be pleased to hear. We, uh, Got some really interesting stuff basically, and uh, a lot to cover. So it's probably best that we just uh, get on with it. Right. I know I said there wasn't many books, but uh, I believe in saving the best till last, so we'll get these out of the way to start with. Um, you've seen these before in my show, uh, but you, I think more often than not you'll see the reading books. These are the activity books that accompany each reading book. Um, so this is the activity book for Gordon Goes Too Fast, this is the activity book for Thomas Has a Secret, uh, Edward Goes to the Woods, right, um, let's have a look inside, each book has a different activity, like this one is a tracing book, so basically, uh, yeah, it's just activities based around tracing and copying and We've got a couple of pages of tracing paper there. I used to use... Uh, <coughs> sorry. I used to use greaseproof paper when I was younger to, as tracing paper because it was a lot cheaper. Um, and... Um, <coughs> oh dear. Hay fever. Um, for each of these books I paid 25p. Um, this one's a sticker book. <coughs> oh God. Um, um, this one's a sticker book. So let's have a look inside. So, uh, camera. Oh, there's the stickers. <coughs> I'm really sorry about this. So it's just it's bad hay fever weather. So, um, there's all the stickers. Um, label the picture and all sorts of different activities there. None of these have been filled in. <coughs> oh dear. Uh, and uh, the last one, Gordon Goes Too Fast, is also a sticker book. And uh, it's got various... <coughs> oh, it's getting on my nerves now. <laughs> How unprofessional. Um, it's got various activities in it. Looks like it's got the same stickers in it. There's the other. <laughs> Damn. Um, and it's got uh, different things in it. <laughs> oh dear. I'm going to have to retake this, I reckon. Um, oh well. And there we go, there's the three of them. Now, I'm going to go and get a hay fever tablet. I've only got some hay fever tablets. I, I, I just want to apologise for that last, uh, that last item or items, and um, uh, we'll be uh, stick around because there's a lot to come up. I hope that hasn't encouraged you to turn off. I, I know uh, when you tune into a Calico TV production, you expect poor quality, but uh, that was a bit too far. I would retake it, but I just really can't be bothered. Um, other brands of drink are available not as good um, anyway uh, we're now back on track and stick around because we have got a lot of good stuff coming up was that alright? ok right. Right. Do, do you think I sounded sincere enough? good right. <coughs> next up we have this uh, movie pack um, this is a three DVD box set. Um, you don't see these in charity shops, charity shops very often, so I did pick this up. Um, I am going to keep it because I haven't got this particular box set. Um, um, basically, uh, there's a bit of a chip there. Um, all it is is three discs in one uh, case. I'm sure you was able to figure that out yourselves. Um, 
So we got the Great Discovery, calling all engines, and Hero of the Rails there. And um, I paid two pounds for this, which is quite good, really, and considering there's three movies. Um, you probably I don't know if you can see that, but the the special features it said is learn with Thomas. I suppose that's from Calling All Engines. Seven fantastic music videos. Uh, yeah, um, engines quiz down at the station. Passengers. Uh, game follow the whistle. Um, and there we have there we are. It's got a brief description there of each movie. Um, three sixty minute specials. Uh, run time is 181 minutes, so just over, well, one minute over, three hours. Um, and there's the spine. Um, I think that's about it. I don't know what else I could say about this. Um, the condition of the disc seems alright, I reckon they play. That's one thing you've got to watch out for when you buy from charity shops, of course. I've told you many times before. Um, if possible, always have a look inside the case before you buy and have a look at make sure the disc is in acceptable condition. These are. They they look like they're gonna play. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, that does go on there. Right. There we are. Right. Um so Yes, there we are. A three movie pack. Will I ever watch it? Probably not, but still. Here is a jigsaw puzzle. Um, I haven't seen this one before, to be honest. Um, it's 15 pieces. Um, and it's got one of these illustrations, a CGI style illustration. You see these in the magazines a lot. Um, and down here it actually says on the jigsaw, Thomas the Tank Engine. EST 19 established 1945 which of course is a nice nod to the railway series and it says up here I paid one pound by the way but it says up here also complete um, it's for one years plus which means I'm just able to make it uh, if it had been any younger than that I, it would have been against health and safety um, regulations but um, have fun completing this colourful shaped Thomas puzzle it, it, it helps problem solving and physical development yes um, and then it explains how it does it you know in typical you know nowadays sort of style um, uh, tried and tested this toy has passed MS toy standards for safety and durability very good so this is a, a Marks and Spencer's exclusive toy as you can see it's got their website in their address here and uh, made in China. Let's have a look for the date. Oh, the date's down there. 2011. I didn't know Marks and Spencer was still doing uh, Thomas products like that, to be honest. But uh, uh, I suppose I'm going to go and take it to see Calico. He won't do it, I know, but no harm in trying. Hey, I've got something for you to do here. I told you once, and I, I will tell you again, I can't do these puzzles anymore. What? I have other responsibilities now, like um, making sure Spencer has my uh, undivided love and attention, so that more, maybe, just maybe, one day he will be a mainline locomotive. Yeah, where is Spencer anyway? Uh, school. School? Yes, school. Yeah. I sent him to that one that you said Genesis went to. What, Charterhouse? Yeah, I'm not sure it's a real place. It is a real place, but it's also one of the most expensive schools in the country. And it's in Surrey. What the hell are you on about? Well, you can't put a price on a decent education. I wish I had one of them when I was younger. Don't um, we all? However, um, he's only gone to an open day today. Um, he'll be back soon. Right. You, you're completely and utterly mad, aren't you? It's great, isn't it? Lunatic. I, I, I can't believe it. I'm working. I'm such an idiot. So it now forced me to make this jigsaw myself, as, as I suspected. So let's open it up and have a look. We've got a bit of jigsaw there, look. Um, right. So let's have a look and see uh, how easy it is. 
start with the corners of course. I don't know why I'm talking, this will probably be muted and sped up. It depends whether the episode runs short. No, a uh, uh, nice uh, sort of different shape. Um, actually, a pretty good puzzle. I wonder how much it would have cost when new. Um, it doesn't say. Um, no, no idea. But uh, I paid a pound, like I said earlier. And um, I think it's worth a pound, don't you? It's quite a nice a nice illustration, a nice image there. Um, uh, yes, I'm pleased I bought that. Um, in Calico, quite frankly, missed out, I feel. Uh, but then if he will behave like that... Uh, um, no, back in the box. Would you buy that? Would you, would you buy that for a pound? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, make sure you comment on the video, tell us whether you like it, uh, if you've got any questions I'll try and answer them the best I can. If not in the comments section I'll answer them in the uh, final episode of the series which is our almost live one where we uh, pick the winners out. I've dropped a piece of puzzle on the floor, hold on, there we go. So, uh, yeah, so please do get in touch, you can also email at calicotv123 at gmail.com. Uh, there probably will be links to all that and uh, you know uh, reminders of how you can get in touch in the description so check that out next I must confess this next item is a book but it is a book with a difference there we go what this is basically is um, a book <laughs> but it's a big book and it includes uh, four Thomas Story Library titles with a CD which reads them. Um, we will be checking out the CD in a bit. Uh, it'll be one of two trips to the Calico TV office. Um, oh, stuck together there. Someone spilt some on it. I, I did buy this new, as you see on the front. I'll just show you that quickly. The recommended retail price is fourteen ninety nine. I paid five ninety nine from the Works, which is my favourite bookshop. Although I went in there the other day, they didn't have much in the way of Thomas. I'm just not the camera. Just bear with us. Right there we go. Uh, yeah, they didn't have much in the way of Thomas. Um, and that's but it's basically it. Really is just the story library books in a bigger format um, with a CD. Um, on the back we see that indeed it did cost fourteen ninety nine. Children will love these four Thomas Story Library titles with a bonus audio CD. There are hours of listening and reading enjoyment packaged together in this collectible edition. They should have done more of these actually. They should have done four titles in a book and made a series. Um, because I think this had been quite popular. Um, um, I don't know who narrates it. I would guess that uh, Michael Angelis or Angelus narrates it, but let's just have a look at the publication information. Pat Rind and Sharon Miller, God help you all. First uh, first published a single single audiobook editions in two thousand and four. Yes I do remember them. I don't haven't got any of the single audiobook editions. I think there was a few more books as well, not just these books mentioned here. Um first published in Great Britain in two thousand and eleven by Dean. Um, illustrations by Robin Davis, Jerry Smith, and Creative Design. Um, so uh, that's how you get that out. And then I had a book and CD set like that before of Thomas. It was Sticky Toffee Thomas, I believe. I don't know if it featured in recent purchases or not, but um, it's come undone. Right. <coughs> yeah, there we are. Right. Well, let's take this upstairs. Come on. Right, 
let's turn it on. I don't have a CD player anymore, hence why we're watching it on a telly. Um, I apologise for the blurred lines, but... So we've got the engine roll call song. This is a story about Thomas, based on the railway series by the Reverend W. Audrey. Well, there's no mistaking that, that's definitely Michael me, Angelus. Michael Angelus. There we go. This is a story about James, based on the railway series by the Reverend W. Audrey, and read aloud by me, Michael Angelus. James was a new engine, with a shining coat of red paint. He had two small wheels in front, and six driving wheels behind. They were smaller than Gordon's, but bigger than Thomas's. You're a special mixed traffic engine, the fat controller told He's James. He's not forgotten how to do the voices. That means you can pull either coaches or trucks. James felt very proud. The fat controller told James that today he was to help Edward pull coaches. You need to be careful with coaches, said Edward. They don't like getting bumped. If you bump them, they'll get cross. But James was thinking about his shiny red coat and wasn't really listening. James and Edward took the coaches to the platform. A group of boys came over to admire James. When you hear Thomas whistle, turn the page for the next part of the story. Thomas the tank engine had six small wheels. So they're just repeating themselves now, I suppose. And then we got the engine roll call at the end, and that's uh, that's pretty much it, to be honest. So, um, what did what did you think? I played a little bit of James, uh, Michael Angelis there. Uh, wouldn't here's just a thought for you. Wouldn't it be great if they brought the series back, the audio series of narration on the uh, story library books, or even Thomas Storytime books? With Mark Morrigan, or whatever his name is, doing the uh, narration. Now, there's a thought. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Because uh, Michael Angelis there, you could tell, was uh, he was sort of in his period where he was starting to decline. He wasn't quite Series 15 or Series 16 bad, but he was, you know, you could tell. You know, um, you know that, that he wasn't at his best like uh, but then he is getting old so you can't really blame him for that but um yeah it not not too bad was it um i i wish they'd have done more of them to be honest um anyway back to the shed i suppose did you see it well there it is This is a push down and go model. Uh, we covered one before. I'll be putting them side by side. We'll have a look at them in a minute. So basically, exactly the same as the last one. You push the driver down and the wheels spin. Um, but this one is a newer, a newer model. It's made, as you can see there, in 2004 by Tomy. Um, I paid one pound ninety five, so two pound, and um, and it's a nice model. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to put the handbrake on. <coughs> there we are. 
Um, as you can see, he's got some marks to the face, some pen marks, and probably will come off. Got a couple of marks and scuffs here and there. But apart from that, he's in pretty good condition. Now, I why do you keep wanting to leave? Anyway, let's put them side by Here's side. Here's the two models, uh, side by side. You'll probably see quite a lot of difference. Um, let's start with the first difference so we can see. The face has obviously changed. Um, um, well, it's obvious. Uh, the buffer beam, the front here, has changed. It's more realistic on the newer one. This looks more like a My First Thomas buffer beam. Um, also, if we look on top, you can see the driver has lost quite a lot of weight since uh, he last uh, went out in Thomas. And um, aside from the colours, we're not going to count the colour that this Thomas is basically green. The other difference is that the older Thomas uses stickers, whereas this it's all just on there. There's no sticker. The only thing that I can see that's a sticker is the whistle. Um, this one doesn't even have a whistle, um, which can be quite embarrassing. Um, and I think there's a bird on the roof. Um, like I said, the sticker's there. Uh, it's got his boiler bands and a, a proper shaped dome. This one's just got a little short stumpy one. Um, uh, what else is the um, the wheels are extremely different these are just well I don't know what they are um, but these are like the proper wheels these are very highly detailed you've got the spokes and all there and uh, these are just round things stuck on on the back he hasn't got any buffers this one has and the other side is same as the other side. It's a very rare instance where the newer model is superior to the older model. Usually things get worse, but this one has got considerably better. In comparison, this model looks absolutely rubbish in comparison to this one, which is quite rare. Um, was made in like I said in 2004 and this one was made in 1997 so uh, not, uh, about eight years difference um, a lot can happen in eight years Thomas can undergo plastic surgery it seems so um, yes I think that's about it but of course I am gonna race them this better be important. Uh, Spencer's telling me about his day at school, but um, he also said that no one's heard of Genesis, sir. Yeah, well, this is important, all right? We need to go and race these two mo models. Well, I like being a father to old Spencer, but I also like racing, and as racing was here first, we do the racing. Yeah. See you later, Spencer. Oh, Race towards that thing there. Camera. Yeah, you're not going to say camera, so you're breaking the fourth wall. What <laughs> race towards that, that wall there? Well, right. what, what's the point in it driving towards the wall? Is it <coughs> into it? Right, so you've got that one. Right. Ready? No. No? Yeah. Right, get him in the line. Oh, right, ready? Yeah, we can't put our heads down. So. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Alright, three, three, two, one, go. I think you won. I did. By quite a considerable amount. So you went through the 4-4. Oh damn, that oh, doesn't oh, count. Oh. That's it, take it over, Sh -sh show, show. There we go. <laughs> you moved the 4 wall. There we are there, see, look who won. I won by a considerable distance. I better get, I better get back to the shed now, alright? Yeah. yeah, I'm just going to leave this, yeah, this wall here. <laughs> yeah, put it back. It's your wall, this one, right. I'm going back to my wall in the shed. Uh, have you got your push on? There it is. Right. Uh, she'll be back. Then this is mine. I'm going to take it back to the shed. Oh, what are you doing with it? God knows. I, I, I can't it's been remember. It's so long ago. It's been so long since I recorded it. <laughs> I'm going to go up there now with these, all right, and do something with them. See you later. <laughs>
What is this? Let's find out. Yes, this is a bundle of three My First Thomases. Let me just move the stool out of the way. They're in a carrier bag and I paid £1 for the lot, which is an absolute bargain. Um, get into this bag. Uh, Um. Right, let's start with first things first. Let's start with the number one engine, Thomas, a very small model. Well, uh a fantastic model, it's really all I can say. Uh, fantastic face, rather. Uh, the face is... Uh, I've always said this, I've said this several times before, and these are my first Thomases. The model may be slim, simplistic and uh, rather bland, but the faces are always top-notch, and this one is no exception. Round here, as with all my first Thomases, the lack of detail is uh, terrible, but... Um, that's the style, I suppose. Um, you know, the number one should be over here. There should be a cab here. You know, you know he's even missing his red stripes and whistles. It's just a blue block, basically. Um, on the back there, you can see the coupling there. And the other side is basically the same. Um, the face is really what sells these. I suppose you could take the face off if you you wanted to and stick it on some outer another model. Um, the wheels have got quite a bit of, like chewing. Uh, I should imagine if kids use this as a teething toy. Um, I saw it when it was made. I uh, can't see. Uh, hold on. Oh, hold on a sec. 1995. Well, oh, it's older than I thought. It's a good chance I probably I bought this when it first came out. I had a Percy set and. Uh, by coincidence, the next one we're going to look at. Again, face is absolutely spot on. A uh, nice shade of green as well. Um, the six obviously should be back here, but again, you know, he he looks more like you know Thomas. Percy's meant to like have a round body and that, so. They just really sort of coloured Thomas green and stuck a number six where the one is on Thomas, so not really much attention to detail or really any care goes into making these, I'd have thought. Um, uh, there's that face again. Um, I'm surprised they even bother to give them buffers, to be honest. Um, let's have a look when this one was made, because... If it was made about 95, yes, it was made in 95. I bought, uh, I do, it's one of the, it was the first thing my mother bought me was a, my first Thomas set, and it had the fat controller, a truck, and Percy in it. And that was what got me into Thomas in the first place. All those years ago, it probably would have been about 96, 95 sort of time. I was probably about two, and uh, we bought it from Woolworths, which is now gone, which is a shame because I like Woolworths. Um, uh, and this is, it's like Thomas. This is in very good condition with some scuffing. Uh, the wheels are in better shape than Thomas. Um, let's have a look at the next next item. Carriage. I believe this is Spencer's special carriage. Um, this actually has more detail than the engines, which is uh, surprising, really, isn't it? But um, this actually looks pretty good. Um, I'll show you how it couples together in a minute. But um, let's just check the date on this one. This one will be later, I'd have thought. 1996. Well, it can't be uh, Spencer's carriage because he wasn't about then. But, uh, I, oh, I know, no, it can't be that either. I was going to say it was Gordon's special carriage, but that didn't come out till 98, did it, in uh, Gordon and the Gremlin. I think this is just meant to be an express carriage. Um, cream roof there. 
um, some dirt on the wheels, but no chewing or anything. Let's have a look at how they couple together. Alright, so uh, what happens really is just stick this hump <laughs> over the, uh, the hook there and uh, take a strong coupling that carries to do with some oil. And on the other end you, you can hook another carriage, but of course you can't hook Thomas because he's got the same coupling. I believe when I was young I just used to do that and hook him over like that and put him along like that. But then we've got kids do it as much though. Let's uh, switch the trains. A good coupling system really. Being the big kid I am I couldn't resist the chance to have a mess about with these toys. Actually that's a good point I wonder if Calico Spencer wants a little playmate. Oh, can I have five minutes to speak to Spencer? No, you've got a job to do. Oh, what now? Another jigsaw to be made? The shed moved another seven inches to the left. No, I've actually got a brother for Spencer. Oh, I can't afford another one. Do you mean, I'm going to have to wait until I'm financially stable. But I have a plan, though. Because um, when I do an MOT, I'm going to say there's lots of stuff wrong with it. And then uh, pocket the money is being resourceful. No, it's not called being resourceful, Calico. It's called stealing. Anyway, these, like, these are small. They won't cost much. All right, All right you want to have a look? There's one. No. Yeah, the fourth wall. Yeah, never mind. Right, they're used to our side dash about <laughs> And this one? You do my head in. Do you not watch Team Team because it's. That one's some distance. <laughs> and, uh, um, have I got anything there? Well, well seeing as you asked, Calico. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got this camera. Ah, Spencer's been nagging me for one of these for days. It's handy I bought it up. <laughs> it was, really. Yeah, it's almost like a screw. Yeah, well, he's been wanting to be a Obviously, if he wants to be a maid like Lego, if he's got a sort of project for his job, so yeah. I'll just cut him up. Express coming through. That's actually more than a cow. Learn the script. <laughs> I'm so proud. Actually, it was I've never been so proud, but we'll accept that one. <laughs> <laughs> the next items are quite special and quite rare I believe. You don't see these very often in charity shops especially. They creep up quite often on the internet but not so much in the charity shops. Uh, for quite a while now I've been one of those sort of old people that you see <laughs> uh, flicking through all the vinyls in, in charity shops looking for Genesis and Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins but uh, I never thought I'd actually find these. Now they're not in their original sleeves, but um, and they have got quite a few marks on them. It's going to be sort of hit and miss whether they play. I uh, wouldn't like to put money on it. Let's just take a look what I've got. Uh, the Railway Stories, Thomas and the Breakdown Train, read by Johnny Morris, and uh, uh, Thomas and the Trucks, also read by Johnny Morris, and these ones are read by Johnny Morris as well. This is Edward's Day Out, and on the other side it's uh, Edward and Gordon uh, like I said they are quite scratched in places but uh, I'm gonna go and try them I have never actually heard these never in fact I haven't seen them before in person so uh, I was very delighted to pick these up and I got them for 10p each um, and also, uh, what I was equally pleased to pick up was the uh, Genesis EP 3x3, which features Paper Late, which was in the same shop. So uh, that was a good day, that was. <laughs> Come on, then, let's, go and, uh, let's go upstairs and check these in my record player.
Uh, let's try uh, Edward and Gordon. This is the first time I've ever heard these, so let's go. Edward and Gordon. One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. You watch me this afternoon, little Edward. When I rush through with the express, that'll be a splendid sight for you. Just then, his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Goodbye, little Edward. Edward went off too to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a quick pull. And the trucks would scream out, Oh, 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 whatever's happening. And he blew his whistle. Look at me. Obviously, uh, from a time when they had to do their own sound effects. Oh, I've just scratched the dit, scratched it a bit. Never mind. Be all right. Um, now let's have a look at the other one. Let's go for uh, Thomas and the Trucks. Thomas, I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead, I'll push the coaches to the yard. Thomas was delighted. Thank you, Edward. That will be nice. So they asked their drivers next day if they could change. And the drivers said... Whoa, whoa, yes. And Thomas ran off happily to find the trucks. Now trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they're doing. They don't listen to their engine. And when he stops, they bump into each other screaming, Oh, 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 whatever is again. happening. And I'm sorry to say, they play tricks on an engine who's not used to them. And Thomas, in return, always whistles. Well, I don't know about you, but I know what I'd rather have. seriousness though um that was the first time I've ever heard Johnny Morris's narration and quite frankly I, I didn't like it um <laughs> I, I know it's I suppose it's of its time in sort of outdated now but um I just thought it was really bad to <laughs> do I I um uh, I don't know why people go so mad over Johnny Morris's narration it was all right, but I think in seriousness I would prefer to listen to I Missed Again than uh, Johnny Morris reads the railway stories. Um, it's somewhat nice to have in the collection though, so I don't regret buying them at all for 10p, you know. Um, I will listen to them properly at some point, but... Um, That's about it, really. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of crackling. That's to do with the age of the things and the, and the dust. There's probably some dust on the needle. 
that record player gets a lot of use as you can probably imagine um, and uh, oh, I have just done that load of marks on my Abacab record anyway um, I'll meet you back down in the shed shortly but uh, first of all I've got more important matters to attend to as you know I'm a firm believer in saving the best till last but I haven't really done that today I've uh, saved the worst to to last in a way but yeah, I think uh, a better way of saying it would be I've saved the most interesting thing till last it's a knockoff Thomas now this is called Thomas Small Train Track Series and it promises as you can see over there infinite fun the track of the running small train is suddenly rotating the small train rotates past the slope by using unique skill and crosses the curving bridge and then continues its journey. So it's a changing track small train. Right. And at the top there we can see some uh, some Japanese writing, so some Chinese. Uh, keep the track clean. Now I have no idea if this is all there, I haven't bought this new, I bought it from a charity shop. Um, I think I paid, uh, I don't know how much I paid, it's not on there is it? Um, probably a couple of quid. Um, it does require batteries, it requires two AA batteries which I happen to have, so uh, I'm going to have a go at setting this thing up. I would take it down to Calico but he's uh, busy with uh, Spencer. Let's do this. If Thomas did a crossover of the Simpsons with the Simpsons, this is probably what you'd get. Um, this is a horrible, horrible model. Let's turn him on and see what happens. I think he thinks he's a fire engine. I think the MAD control is reprogrammed him to be a fire engine. See, as soon as you turn around the wheels go. Let's stick him on this track and uh, hope for the best. Right, you've got a good view of the uh, item now. I will go and get some close-ups in a minute. Let's turn it on and fingers crossed. already stuck. Right, so. This bit doesn't look quite right to me.
Come back. Here's the sticker on the uh, on the uh, bridge bit. Now, uh, I don't remember the Thomas and Friends logo looking like that. And uh, I don't know what's happened to Thomas, but he seems to have got some duck cheek cheekbones. Um, and he's puffing out black smoke. Um, he's missing his coupling. Just a very cheap illustration. Just what you'd expect really. There's only one thing to do with this. I got your message, what did you want? I need you to make something disappear for me. I told you I can't look at that again. Um, no, this is my problem. I need you to make it disappear. Are we on the same page here? Let's check. Page six. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think you pack that in. Look, I'm trying to create a gangster vibe here. So, got my cigar and all that. And uh, I need you to make this disappear. Well, what's in it for me? Well, you can have an elastic band that I've got in the shed. Right? You can have that now. Or you can have a puff on my cigar. I'll have a puff on my cigar. Oi, oi, here. Come here. Back here. Here. You <coughs> said a puff. I don't want to spend the same smoking anyway. You're going the wrong way. So the table's down there. Yeah, I know. Just testing you. Through, through that. Oi. Well, that's it for another episode. We'll be back ne ne next week for the last uh, proper episode of Recent Purchases. Um, I know there wasn't that many items this time, but I hope what I did cover was entertaining. Next week we have a surprise item, which I didn't know I was going to get. And, um, and a lot of other stuff as well. Um, there's no giveaways in this episode. I apologise for that, but... Uh, there is a lot to give away this series, and uh, some of it's already been some end. Um, uh, and that's uh, pretty much it, that's all I've got to say. Hope you enjoyed watching today's episode. It was um, it was fun, today's episode was. There was not so much stuff, but what we did cover was very interesting stuff. Um, <coughs> that was annoying. But um, aside from that, a fun day. So, anyway, join us again next week, same time, same place, for more recent purchases. I've been Steam Team. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. And from Calico, it's. Die! 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 Spencer! Yes. See you again soon. Ta-da.